Hey everybody, welcome to a, uh, a demo of rendering within SolidWorks using PhotoView 360. This is going to be absolute basics, but enough to, to uh, hopefully whet your appetite and, and uh, get you interested in digging in further. Th to get started on it, not notice it's all gray and plain looking, this little gas engine. We want to go in there and tell each component to act a certain way, uh, to look like a certain material. So. In order to do that, we've got to turn a couple things on. Uh, I'm going to go up to one of these menus down here, right-click on it, and you can see that Render Tools is available. It just hasn't been turned on. I'll turn on Render Tools, and then I'll go to that toolbar, and you can see we do have a toolbar, but a lot of the items are grayed out. Part of the reason for that is that we haven't turned on Photo View 360. So to turn that on or install it, we need to go to Add-ins. So we're going up here to SolidWorks Tool Tools, down to Add-ins. Going to check the box next to Photo View 360 and say OK. Now you see that most of those icons colorized. The ones that didn't are just not available in this particular step of an operation. And we're ready to start playing with this. And, and we're only going to play with two aspects of it. We're going to apply some appearances, which will look like certain materials. And we're going to change a scene just to give you a sense that that's pretty easy to do. So what I've decided ahead of time is I'd like this this main casting, this crankcase, to, to look like a cast aluminum. Okay, so I'm going to go over here to the appearances, appearances, expand that. I want a metal because that's what aluminum is. Once I select aluminum, I have a bunch of visual choices here, polished and brushed and burnished and matte and etc, etc. Really go by what's in these little preview windows, these balls that have been rendered for us, and look for the look that you want. Now, I happen to have already experimented a little bit with this cast, and I really like the way it looks. It looks like a rough cast surface. So I'm going to just drag that out there, drop that onto this thing, and apply it at the component level. That is the one that looks like an assembly with the little green brick on it. And you see that it, it doesn't look any different. That's because there's one more tool we want to turn on. And it, it, I did this on purpose because I want you to see that you, you just have to have some of these things on. If you go up here to the view settings and turn on real view graphics. Now you have to have a good enough graphics card for this to even be available. If it doesn't look like a gold ball, then it's not available on your computer as it's configured now. But, but for most of us, we'll see the gold ball hit that. And notice that it has applied this nice cast texture to just that one component. Okay, so now I'm going to pick up the speed a little bit here because we're going to apply these materials, these appearances to lots, lots of different parts. And I am going to do them all, not all the ones internally, but all of them just so you can see the final render. It, it, it can look pretty good pretty easily. So the next piece that I'll do is this upper piece up here. I want to do that. I'm going to do that so it kind of looks like a machined part. So I'll still do it out of aluminum. So I'm going to go in here to appearances and just go looking through those those samples. I like the brush. That's not bad. So I'll take the brushed aluminum, drop it onto this guy, and again I'll apply. It. I, I want to apply it either at the assembly level or at the part level. Uh, they'll both give me results in this case. I just automatically put it at the assembly level so it's not reaching back and doing anything uh, at the part level. So it's just here at this assembly. And it doesn't look so pretty yet or anything like that, but the rendering part will, will turn it to really looking pretty nice and pretty realistic. Uh, again, remember if we turned off real view, this would all just look gray and you couldn't tell that things were changing. So turn that on so you can tell that your, your applied material or appearance is working. Okay, so this next one down here, I think I'm going to have that be brass, these uh, cooling fin looking things. And so I'm just going to go in there and go to brass. And let's see what I want. Brush looks pretty good. Burnished. Oh, I like burnish. So let's take the burnish. Now, you know, I'm getting excited because, oh, I like burnish. It's, it's an artistic preference at this point. And you really should kind of be that way, is looking at it going, which one looks the way I have in mind for this? So then I'm just going to drop that on this guy. And 
you know, when I used to see even what we've done so far, back in the early days of being able to apply materials and do renderings, this is already looking pretty darn cool. The, the cast surface looks cast. This this burnished surface up here, whatever, it looks pretty good. Um, it's it's already looking kind of nice, but it'll really make a jump in quality when we turn on the when we get the rendering tools going. All right, so just stop talking so much and get on to a couple more of these. Let's make this back piece back here some sort of steel, the mounting plate or whatever that is. Brushed, polished. I'm staying away from polished just because it's so shiny. It basically looks like chrome, which can look cool, but not exactly what I'm going for. Yeah, that one's not quite as shiny. So just drop that onto that part. Component, technically. Okay, we're getting there. And then um, this nose cone here, I want that to be kind of really nice shiny red. And I've experimented some, and I like the way plastic looks. Even though I know we would never make this, we probably wouldn't make this piece out of plastic, um, I'm, I'm going to apply a plastic so it gives me the look that I want. So we'll go in here and get out of metals for a moment. Go up to plastics. There's lots to choose from. I'm going to go right to a high gloss because that's kind of the look I'm going for. And then scan down through here until I find the red high gloss plastic. Drag that onto this, drop it, and apply it. And let's do it again because I want to get these other pieces to match. So I'll do that here. All right, and then now a little bit further. This guy's going to be a brass. I'm just just decided I'm going to make that a brass. So let's go get out of plastics again. Go to metal. Hello, metal. There you go. And then brass. Burnished. Burnished. I still like that burnished, so I'm going to go with that. Okay. And then here's a fun one, is I want to make this propeller blade out of out of wood. And I experimented, most of them are kind of light colored, and I want this to be a little bit darker. We're not going to go teak or anything. But, um, so I played around and I think I decided that oak looks pretty good. So what kind of material is wood? They would put that in the organic category. And so if I go to organics, down the list here, go to wood, and like I say, I already experimented, so I found that oak works pretty nice. And then if you go through these oaks, it again gives you lots of different ways of looking at it. I kind of like that satin, so I'm going to go ahead and go with that. So I'm going to drag that and drop it onto this blade. Okay. And let's see, do we have anything else? Ah, a couple things. This little guy, I forget what that's called, and I apologize to those that really know what all this is. I think it's probably supposed to have a hole in it, too, now that I look at it. But I'm going to make that brass as well. Uh, comes from my steampunk days, I guess, or something. I'm uh, going to go ahead and make that a brass. Oops. Brass, brass, brass. Don't drag it out there yet. Uh, polished, brushed, burnished. And then lastly, all of these fasteners. And part of the reason I want to do the fasteners is to show you uh, a way to kind of speed it up a little bit. And so if I go to this, and those are just going to be steel. And they don't have to be fancy. Brush steel is fine. If I go out there and drop that on one of these, Remember, I have these choices. If I do it at the assembly level, it's only applying it to that one screw or fastener. If I do it at the part level, because they're all the same part, they're copies of the same part, uh, it'll apply to all of them. So I'm just going to click on that. This would make me have to go grab each one. This one lets me apply it to all of them. So grab that. And I think that's enough to be dangerous here. Yeah. So now I've got, we've got uh, materials applied to all these things, or appearances, as, as PhotoView360 calls it. And now I'm ready to 
start rendering. And I'm going to render a little and then we'll change scenes just so you can see how dramatic that can be. So to get going in rendering, we go back up here to this render toolbar. I recommend turning on preview window. I think it's a useful thing to have around and you'll see some times where you can see in the preview something you either like or don't like and, and go in there and make some changes whereas just seeing it on the big screen you don't quite see all that detail yet. So I'm going to just turn on preview window. It asks me do I want to switch to a pers perspective view. Yeah, go ahead. Just thinks it'll make the, the thing look better. And then now it's rendering just within this little preview window to give you a kind of a sense of what it's going to look like. Now from this scale, from this distance if you will, uh, it, it doesn't look much better, uh, but this really isn't the rendering that we're going to do. It's just a preview just to get a sense of what we're looking at. Okay, so now I'm going to go to options or settings if you will. and set my size of image. So if you go up here, you can see all these different sizes from pretty tiny, something that would, you know, say an inch or whatever on, uh, on up to this 1920 by 1080. Okay, that'll work great. And then this is a critical time to set the quality. Good, better, best, maximum are my choices for the render quality good really is perfectly fine for most rendering purposes. I've done some comparisons where somebody rendered it out and even printed it in color and and really a lot of people's eye don't even hardly see the difference. There is a difference for sure and you can see if you look close. But if you were just wanting to get this done, good will work fine, then better takes longer, more horsepower and, and computer power best and boy if you set it to maximum in most cases that means waiting a while some people even let these render you know overnight if they're doing this kind of thing a lot so I'm gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and jump to better good is good enough but better is a little better and um, now we've set the quality and the size just gonna say okay okay and now we're ready to render this guy I'm gonna jump right to final render just clicking on that button. It'll take a minute for it to come up and it's showing this in a preview window. It'll give us a, a kind of a quick version. There we go. Remember we set this to better. If we set it to good it would take a little less time and if we set it higher it would take more time and it really can dramatically change and I'm not going to show you that in real time here. It's like watching paint dry but but basically you can see how this is working. Now this is actually in its final rendering stage. All those little orange guys that look like a little Pac-Man munching away out there, um, those are the cores that you have in your computer. So I believe, I haven't stopped to count them, but it looks like about eight of them. So I have dual quad core uh, you know, processor in this computer. And the more cores you have, the faster you can render uh, this kind of an item. Um, so yeah, it's taken a little while. I'm going to let it go in real time. Remember we set it to better. Good would have been faster for demo purposes, but I wanted a, a decent looking rendering so you can kind of look at it and say that it's, it's worth doing. And so we'll wait for that to process for a second. When it gets done and all those little, notice that it slows down over the material because that's where it's having to put in all these details of shade and color and, and lighting and everything like that. When it gets completely done, I'm going to go down here near the bottom of this area and it just says save image okay and then I can just save the image put it wherever I want and we'll go take a look at it and for now we'll call that good and, and you've got kind of the basics of applying some appearances uh, I'm, then the final piece I'm going to do just for demo purposes is change the, the, the scene or the background, the environment, because I want you to see how dramatic that can change the look of this presentation if that's what it was Okay, so there's the bing bong that says that it's done processing. If we zoom a little bit on this, you can see it really looks pretty darn good. It really does. Okay, so I'm going to close out of that. Close out of this preview box. And we'll do, we'll do one more thing. Oh, I didn't save the image, but that, that's okay. We'll go ahead and change the background, render it, and then save that image. So, so now I'm going to go over to this same tool, Appearances, Scenes, and Decals get out of the appearances and go to scenes. 
and scenes are really useful, especially for us, for, for me, like not a professional illustration or rendering kind of a person. I just want this to look better, cooler, more, more interesting, more realistic, whatever it is I'm going for. So I'm going to go right to studio scenes. You can see there's several basic scenes, book scene, uh, studio scenes, presentations. I'm going right to studio because I like this top one. And I'm just going to take this one called reflective floor black and just drag it onto the background, not onto any of the parts, just onto the background and drop it. And if I zoom out a little bit here, you can see that that looks pretty cool already. Look at the reflection down here. Uh, it's got that gradated from dark to light. You know, I, I kind of like the look of it, so I'm going to go with that. And then I just frame the picture that is kind of arranged it the way I want. And to save a little bit of rendering time, I'm actually I don't think I'm going to do that. I, I was going to go change some other settings, but let's go ahead and just go with this. I don't think it'll take that awful long. There is one thing I can do is let's render a region and turn on preview window. And the reason I do that is I found that this this render region doesn't exactly reflect ex what I've got it wrapped around. And now watch it. It probably will now as I'm demonstrating it live. But um, that's the area within that nice pink boundary there is what I'd like to render instead of all that gray background. And then I'm going to go to preview window, turn that on. That could take only just a couple minutes, I think while we watch it. Okay, and notice, see, that I've got my pink window stretched around it completely. It's kind of clipping off a little bit of the wing or, or of the uh, propeller. So what's nice, though, is it will update. And so I'm just going to grab a hold of this and stretch that out a little bit. And then the preview window reflects what we're actually going to get. And I think that's perfectly fine. So I'm ready to go do the final render. Okay, notice how fast it's going. It's doing pass after pass of rendering and trying to make this look uh, like a photorealistic object. And then now it's down to all those little cores that are popping around this thing. When it gets done, I'll go ahead and hit save image and we'll be done. There's no reason to go look at it any further. I'll zoom in on it a little bit before we do that just so you can see it looks pretty good. Um, remember to, to play around with this as if uh, basically you're you're the artist that is you're the one that wants it to look a certain way and when you go to those those little preview balls that show you what the the appearance is going to look like go by that instead of just purely by the name go by the look of those little rendering samples so so it just let me know let's see if i can zoom in there we go looks pretty nice and as i'm exiting out of this and, and quitting just a reminder that everything's adjustable. You can adjust the size of these bumps, if you will, on the, the cast part here. You can change the orientation of the grain of your wood and the scale of the grain of your wood. And, and there's just all kinds of settings. I'm not going there right now. I'm just kind of giving you an idea of you know, what this can look like. Now that might be a little too far. There we go. Okay, and so then I would just hit Save Image. choose where I want to save it, and we're done. I hope you got something out of that. Enjoy.